Hello, and thank you for choosing to watch our session, Use Anything Other Than Web Mercator. My name is Bojan Šauric. I am a software development engineer for Projection Engine team. Uh, this presentation I will be co-presenting with. Hello, my name is Melita Kennedy. I'm a principal product engineer on the Projection Engine team where I've been working with coordinate systems and transformations since 1994. Okay, let's get started. Today, most maps and other visualizations of GIS data, either on the paper or on the screen, are on Web Mercator. Web Mercator can a standard coordinate system for the web. It is not clear when you become a standard, most people believe this happened with the introduction of Google Maps in 2005. So today, when you open a web map application like ArcGIS Online, as a default, you see a map in Web Mercator. But the issue is that Web Mercator is also used today for images, graphics, and static maps, which are not interactive like web maps. Here on this slide is just one example where non-Mercator projection would definitely be a better choice. Author of this presentation should use Albert's equal area conic projection for the map of the contiguous United States. Cartographers and geographers used to keep a trained eye out to find and report inappropriate uses of Mercator projection. As Mark Munmier suggested in his book, Ram Lines and Map Wars in 2004, misuse of the Mercator projection has amused geographers for decades, perhaps even centuries. That was before the Google Maps and all the fancy web mapping came into the play. Ten years later, Sarah Battersby from Tableau and others from USGS pretty much had to admit that the whole community simply turned a blind eye when Web Mercator projection came to the picture and become more and more popular and misused. Everybody started ignoring the importance of projections and became satisfied with this ill-fitting default just because we do not want to think about this difficult topic. The problem is that Web Mercator is very rarely the right choice, and why is that? For example, let's compare areas of three land masses in this map. Which one is bigger? On the map, Greenland is bigger than South America, and Antarctica appears to be a huge continent. But in reality, South America is bigger than Antarctica and more than eight times bigger than Greenland. In Mercator projection, Greenland and Africa look roughly the same size, but in fact, Africa is about 14 times bigger than Greenland. Web Mercator projection has huge area distortion when further away from the equator you go, and therefore it is not appropriate to render spatial analysis in it or even display its results. It cannot display the poles. They are projected to infinity. So planning your Arctic and Antarctic expedition in this map is a little bit rough. Also, its rectangular shapes gives an impression that our world is flat. Now, spoiler alert, our world is not flat. Even Flat Earth Society does not use Mercator projection for their Earth model. So let's go over some common misconceptions and things you might think they're true about Web Mercator and you think they justify its use. First, Web Mercator is a projected coordinate system. It is not a projection. A projection is mathematical algorithm to project a round surface like ellipsoid to a flat surface like a map. One particular projection can have multiple projection parameters and it can convert to multiple different projected coordinate systems. Projection coordinate system is more than that. It includes full definition of geographic coordinate system. It provides the name of projection algorithm. It also has very specific projection parameter values and it has particular linear units. Here on the slide, we see all elements of Web Mercator projected coordinate system. Next, 
Web Mercator does not preserve shapes. Actually, there is no projection that does that. Let's take another look of Greenland. On Web Mercator, its shape stretches in east to west direction compared to the more realistic shape on the right. If we're comparing those two shapes, they are basically not the same. What projections can preserve are areas. Those are equal area projections. On such maps, all areas are proportional to their area on the Earth. Here we have an example of Albert's conic projection. Greenland still appears to be 14 times smaller than Africa, although their shapes are distorted. Some projections can also preserve local angles. These are conformal projections, like Sir Graphic here on the slide. Conformal property means that projections preserve immediate angles from a point. The scale deformation is the same in all directions at any point, but it differs at every point. If we look at the example on the slide, on the edge we can see a huge continent of Australia. The reason why the continent is so big is because the scale deformation is huge at the edge compared to the scale deformation in the center. Some other projections can preserve distances. They are correct or true to scale only from one point, two points, or along certain lines. For example, on the slide we have azimut liquidistant projection. This projection preserves all the distances from the center or through the center of the map. In our case, this is South Pole Point. Azimut liquidistant projection also has true direction at the center. Directions can usually be preserved from a central point on azimutal projections, therefore they are called azimutal projections. Third misconception, Web Mercator does not preserve local angles, or in other words, Web Mercator is not a conformal. Locations on a round surface are defined with spherical coordinates. In our case, these are geographic coordinates as we know them as longitude and latitude. For example, San Marino is approximately located at 43.9 degrees north and 12.4 degrees east. Locations can be based on either an ellipsoidal or spherical Earth models. Today's data does not use sphere models and most of it is defined on some ellipsoids, such as WGS84. Because we can have two different types of Earth models, projections can also have a pair of equations for both. So Mercator projection has two equations that are defined for spherical Earth models, and has two equations that are defined for ellipsoidal Earth models. Ellipsoidal equations tends to be more complicated. Actually, the Mercator projection is one of the simplest cases, but we can still see that additional computation is needed when projecting from an ellipsoidal model. So let's say we have an Earth that is defined as a sphere, and we project it with Mercator for spheres. In this case, our map is going to be a conformal map. Now let's take an ellipsoid model of the Earth, like WGS4, and we project it with Mercator for ellipsoids. Again, in this case, our map is going to be conformal. Now, on Web Mercator coordinate system, the data is defined by WGS4, that means we're using ellipsoidal model, but it is projected with Mercator for spheres, which is based on spherical model. Would that map be conformal? No, that map is not a conformal, and the reason is because we're mixing two different models. So, basically, the web mercator is an engineering mistake that went out of control. If you thought that web mercator preserves something, the news is it does not. It distorts everything. It distorts shapes, angles, areas, distances, directions, RAM lines, compass bearings, you name it. Also, coordinates are off compared to the true Mercator. Here is an example from NGA report. 
south part of UK is approximately off by 33 kilometers, and the north part is off even more, 36.7 kilometers. Now, some say that Mercator is fine if you use it only at large or very large scales. So, basically, in other words, they say, okay, I'm not going to show the whole work, I'm going to just zoom in for one particular area and I'm going to be fine. Well, that is actually not true. It still requires scale adjustment, especially when you're comparing the different regions. Here I have two cities. On the left, I have Oslo, which is the capital of Norway, and on the right, I have Singapore. Map, web map views are at the same exact scale, and both cities look roughly the same size. Perhaps Oslo is a little bit more bigger than Singapore. Would you agree that this is also the case in reality? You shouldn't, because the fact is Oslo is significantly smaller city than Singapore. Because web mercator enlarges areas that are further away from the equator, even at large scales, things appear to be bigger than they are in reality. Next, the results of geodesic-based analysis are not presented correctly in Web Mercator. So even though you go and you do your homework and you perform analysis accurately behind the scene, it is still important to display the results correctly. The data on this map shows predicted participation anomalies for the years of 2040 to 2059. The analysis that created this map included distance and area measurements which were conducted properly. Looking at the map, the band of the strong colors along the equator does not look very big compared to the rest of the world. A reader of this map might argue that significant anomalies will affect only a very small portion of our planet. They would probably be more concerned about large light green areas at the north. On the area preserving map, the result looks much different. We can see that significant anomalies will actually affect a larger portion of our Earth, and those light green areas at the north are in fact way less significant. Here is another example with beaming. Hexagons were created in area preserving projection, so they literally cover the same area of the Earth's surface, but they do not look like they do in Web Mercator, especially those towards the pole. On the area preserving map, those hexagons look more like they cover the same area even though their shape do not always look like hexagons, especially those at the poles. Next, WGS 1984 Web Mercator is not a static coordinate system. Data that is based on WGS 84 geographic coordinates moves with time due to crystal motions, earthquake, etc. Australia is actually a perfect example for this. Let's say you work for an Australian utility company and you surveyed a new utility lines in 2000. Later on, you publish the utility network in Web Mercator as a feature layer. 20 years later, your contractor has to do some maintenance work on the network. They take your published data and they overlay it with the current satellite image. Your data on their image now shows to be on the streets and not on the curb as it was originally surveyed. Such misalignments can cause you a lot of issues as well as a lot of money for your contractor as well as for your company. If you had published your data in a coordinate system based on Australian datum at that time, which is geocentric datum of Australia 1994, your contractor would then overlay it with the current satellite image in the new Australian datum 2020, and your data would line up perfectly after applying a transformation between the two datums. And finally, the seventh misconception, web maps are not limited to web mercator. Actually, a web map can be in any projected coordinate system when you're using ArcGIS. 
Let's go and take a look a few examples in JavaScript API and ArcGIS Online, how this can be done. With ArcGIS JavaScript API, you can basically use any coordinate system for your map. Here I have a very simple example in equal or projected coordinate system. The map has two layers. In light blue are world's countries, and these little red circles represent world's earthquakes. To create such a map, I needed to do only two things. First, I defined the spatial reference variable, where I provided well-known ID for the coordinate system I want to use. In my case, this is 8857. Then, I use this variable to set up my map view. I use it to define the coordinate system of my map and provide the center of the view. With well-known ID, I can use any predefined coordinate system in ArcGIS. For example, if I change the well-known ID from 8857 to 8859, I will get my map in equal earth projection, but this time it is going to be centered on Asia and Pacific. I can also use more fancier coordinate system like Spielhouse World Ocean Map in a square by changing the ID to 54099. You can also use well-known text strings to create a coordinate system for your map. Here I have an example where I use a Wagner 4 projected coordinate system. A nice thing about providing a coordinate system with WKT strings is that you're no longer limited to predefined coordinate systems. You can basically create and use your own custom projection coordinate system by just changing projection parameters in the string. In my case, since I'm using Wagner 4 projection, I can adjust false easting, false northing, central meridian, and latitude of origin. So let me go ahead and change the central meridian to be minus 158 and latitude of origin to be 21.5. This way, I will get a map in Wagner 4 projection, but now it is going to be centered on Hawaii. In ArcGIS Online, the coordinate system of your map is defined by the coordinate system of your base map. However, it is actually very simple to change it. You go to Add Content to the Layer, and I will browse Living Atlas Layers. Here I'm going to search for Equal Earth, and I'm going to select Equal Earth Global Vector Base Map. Now, instead adding this data as another layer to my existing map, I'm going to select Use as Base Map. As soon as I do that, my previous base map disappears, and now I have a new one in Equal Earth Projection. The same way, you can change your base map and coordinate system of your map in Map Viewer Beta. You go to Add Layer, and again, I'm going to search in Living Atlas. This time, I'm going to search for Spillhouse. And I'm going to select Spillhouse Vibrant Base Map. Again, I use it as a base map. And as soon as I, I do that, now I have a base map in Spielhouse World Ocean Map in a square, projected coordinate system, and I can continue designing and creating my map. Currently, there are not many non-Web Mercator base maps available out there. However, you can always create your own base map in any coordinate system using ArcGIS Pro. A co-worker of mine prepared me this base map of Palm Springs area, and I want to use it in my Palm Springs downtown mini app. We can see the downtown on the map in the light red color. This map was prepared in Web Mercator coordinate system, so I need to change that. I go to Map Properties, and I select Coordinate Systems. I can see that my current coordinate system is really WGC4 Web Mercator. Instead, just browsing through all available coordinate system, I first use Spatial Filter. I select the extent of my downtown layer and I apply the filter. Now I browse through projected coordinate systems, I select state plane and net 
1983-2011 U.S. feet. Here I have two options available, State Plain California Zone 5 and State Plain California Zone 6. Since Palm Springs is in the Riverside County, which uses Zone 6, I choose this coordinate system and I confirm my selection. Once data redraw, I am ready to publish my base map. I go to Share Ribbon, I select Web Layer, and I click on Publish Web Layer. The Share as Web Layer pane opens on the right. I give it the name of the base map, and I provide a short summary of the map. Then I select the type. I want to have a vector tile type. On the Configuration tab, we can already see that the tiling scheme is already pre-populated to match our selected coordinate system. I adjust the level of detail for my map, probably the cities are the best, and I'll hit Publish. Once publishing is finished, log into your ArcGIS Online and open your base map in Map Viewer. The URL of the published data includes the item ID, which you can use to set up your base map in ArcGIS JavaScript API. Changing the base map in your JavaScript application is also easy. All you need to do is remove the base map property of your map object and add a new layer using item ID of your base map. Exactly the same way I was changing the base maps of map viewers before, I can use my new base map in ArcGIS Online. Again, I go to Add Content to the map and I select Search for Layers. My published base map now shows under my content and I use it as a base map. Once the map redraw, I get my map viewer in California State Plate Coordinate System and I continue my work. John Nelson, our house cartographer, prepared some equal area base map for ArcGIS Online. In his blog post, he explains how you can create your own base map in non web locator coordinate system. It is worth checking it out. There is also another blog post by Kenneth Field, Mercator, it is not hip to be square, where he explains three methods or workflows on how you can create a base map and publish data layers that are not in Web Mercator. So there are resources out there that you can use and create a web map in non-Web Mercator coordinate system. Up to here, we just talk about why not to use Web Mercator. I demo how you can use other coordinate systems in ArcGIS Online and JavaScript API. We also saw how you can create your own base map in ArcGIS Pro. Now let's listen to Melita and she will explain us what you can or what you should use instead. Thank you, Boyan. So this part of the presentation will talk about how do you decide what projection you should select. We've been telling you you should not be using Web Mercator. How do you decide what else to be you should use instead? So which projection is the best? There are four options here. Albers equal area stereographic, azimuthal equidistant, and transverse mercator, and actually a fifth one as well with the, the picture here, the graphic, that's the mnemonic projection. So which one of these would be the one you might want to use? Well, it depends on what you're doing. What is your purpose for your map? So Kenneth Field, Ken Field, a colleague here at Esri and a, and a great cartographer last year, made this comment. Where projections are concerned, there's really no good default. Every map should be considered on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on where in the world you're mapping, the scale, purpose, and content. And we're going to talk about all this. So there's been several guidelines on how to choose a good map projection over the years. One of the ones that's easy to find and easy to work with is was done by John Snyder, who worked at the USGS in the 1980s and 90s. So first, you've got your map, and then you're going to have your area of interest that you're, you're going to be working with, for instance, the world, hemisphere, 
and then maybe continents or countries. So you've got three different sizes of extents that you might be working with. He then broke it down further. And if when you're working with smaller areas, what is your general extent of the data? So for instance, when you're working with continents or countries, does it fit more east-west, so in a landscape type of form? Is it more north and south, so more like a portrait? Does it extend equally in all directions, so in a square or a circle? And then finally, does it have some sort of trend off at an angle, i.e. it's an oblique angle? Here's the actual layout of his choices of his guideline. This is available online, and we'll have a link later in the presentation on how where you can find it, so you can print it out or have it available on your computer to, to refer to. So what's appropriate for world maps? You want to look at the pseudo-cylindrical projections first. They've got the, the curved corners. Generally, there you can find equal area, which are good for thematic maps or statistical maps. And for instance, we have two pictures here, one for the equal Earth on the left and Eckert 4 on the right. Another option, particularly if you're using for general maps uh, for display, is a compromised projection. Compromised projection doesn't have a strict conformality or equal area property that it preserves. Instead, it tries to minimize all distortions over the entire surface of the map. So in this case, two, two possibilities are Robinson and Winkle Triple. Technically, Winkle Triple isn't pseudo-cylindrical, but it kind of fits in the same type of category. And Winkle Triple has actually been used by National Geographic Society for some of their world maps. Also for appropriate for world maps would be the straight cylindrical projections. That basically means it's going to be a rectangle. And uh, you can look at compromised projections in that case, such as the Patterson, which is the one on top, or the Platte Carré on the bottom. And, and again, with the compromised projections, they're trying to minimize distortions over the entire map, but they're not strictly equal area or conformal. So there's not too many reasons why you'd want to do this. Maybe if you had a phenomena which was based on longitudes, a good example for that is time zones or possibly if you had some really good aesthetic reason for wanting a rectangular shaped map. So as we start moving scale towards larger and larger scales, what would be appropriate for a hemisphere map or for, let's say, half the globe? Pretty much you'd want to use an azimuthal projection, for instance, azimuthal equidistant, Lambert equal area, or the orthographic projections. We have pictures of two of those here on the on the slide, the one on the left is the Lambert azimuthal equal area. On the right is the orthographic projection. And way back when, for a few of you who might have used ArcViewGIS, there was an example coordinate system in there that was called the World from Space, and that used the orthographic projection. Because you can, as you look at it, it's as if you're in a satellite orbiting way above the Earth, way out, and you're looking down from space at the Earth. So as we move down to a continent or smaller areas, you could still use azimuthal projections. They're also good for polar areas, of course. Or if you have an equal extent from the, from the center point, then you might want to use an azimuthal projection. If you've got conic projections, uh, you would want to use that if you had data that was at the mid-latitudes and was extending more east and west. If you were instead working in equatorial areas or had an east-west extent there as opposed to the mid-latitudes or the polar regions, then you might want to use a cylindrical projection. If your extent is more north to south instead, so along longitude lines, you might want to use a transverse cylindrical projection. And then finally, if you have an extent that's kind of off at an angle, for instance, Madagascar, uh, the Panhandle of Alaska, you might want to use an oblique cylindrical projection because then you can orient it to follow the trend of your data. As we go down towards the largest scale maps, topographic maps, historically what people have used are a transverse cylindrical projection like transverse Mercator, transverse cylindrical equal area, 
or the Cassini projection. Transverse Mercator has been used for UTM, Universal Transverse Mercator Zones, State Plain Zones, and Gauss-Kruger Zones. So if we're going to be selecting projection properties, let's review all of that information we've been talking about in these previous slides. So if you're working with thematic maps, statistical maps, especially when you're comparing areas or densities of objects, you want to use an equal area projection. If you're going to be measuring distances, you might want to look at equidistant projections, but you have to remember that not all distances are going to be correct or be preserved. Usually the equidistant lines are going to be like the standard parallels or perhaps all longitude lines or all lines from the center point, like for, for as medial equidistant, but not for any other lines in the map. So it's, it has restrictions. For regional maps, continents, or smaller areas, then you, you might want to use equal area or conformal, depending on what the purpose of your map is. And then when you're getting into that larger scale, so you're looking at regional maps or for lar very large scale maps, then you might want to use a conformal projection. But really, what, when you want to do that is when you're going to be measuring angles, or you want to maintain, for instance, the right angles of buildings or roads. For instance, for surveying, for navigation, or for military purposes. If you're going to be mapping the entire world, you can usually get away with using a compromise or an equal area projection, and we had a couple examples that we showed you. Right here is the number of supported map projections in the Esri software right now at 1081 and ArcGIS Pro 2.6. There's 72 listed here. And there's another 32 variations on these where they have some sort of restriction or special properties based on the kind of base definition of the map projection. So for instance, the Hotin Oblique Mercator projection actually has four different ways you can define it. The four different ways affect how the parameters are used and what parameters you can set and where the origin of the uh, X and Y coordinates are. So last, the, the existing releases that are out now, so ArcGIS 10.8 and, Arc, and ArcGIS Pro 2.5, we uh, reworked a lot of the documentation for map projections, including there's always been a list of the supported map projections, but it had gotten wildly out of date. So uh, we actually updated that, and every projection now that's supported is in that documentation now. And you can get to that in ArcGIS Pro or in ArcGIS Desktop. We also post, posted a poster of map projections and their properties, like how, where you might want to use it, the extent you would use it for, on GeoNet. It's called Quick Notes on Map Projections in ArcGIS. And again, we'll have a link to that later in the presentation that, that you can uh, take a snapshot of. But right now, here's part of it. And you can see what it looks like there. Uh, one of our colleagues, Heather Smith, works on the Learn team. And they put together basically little tutorials, little lessons on various areas of the software. She put together several um, uh, learn lessons on map projections earlier this year, and that's available for you to work through if you want. And that takes you a little bit deeper into the software and helps you make come more familiar with it and be feel more comfortable with map projections. So earlier this year, we were discussing, a couple colleagues and I were discussing coordinate systems with another colleague from Esri Australia. And one of us, we're not sure who now, we think it was him, but we won't call him out, said, publish your authoritative data in authoritative coordinate systems. We were explicitly talking about Web Mercator and that this came up and it's something you really need to think about. So right now in Esri software that uses the projection engine, for coordinate systems, we've got over 6,700 projected coordinate systems. There's over 970 geographic coordinate systems. There's just over 400 vertical coordinate systems. And then we have a bunch of transformations as well. For transformations, geographic tra or datum transformations convert between two geographic coordinate systems. We are just a hair under 2,300 of those. And for vertical transformations, we're just over 200. So going online, there are several open source tools that can help you design a custom projected coordinate system. One of them is the Projection Wizard, which was designed and built by Voyan. 
and it's available at projectionwizard.org. And I know it's probably a little bit hard to see on the graphic, but you can tell it that you want equal area or conformal. You can tell it the extent that you want, and it'll come back and tell you, by the way, here's all the parameters you can use for that particular purpose and that particular extent. Early this year, Paul Gosling from Manchester Metropolitan University in the UK published an ArcGIS Python add-in for ArcMap, which uh, you can use an ArcGIS desktop and ArcMap to make an appropriate map projection decision. Uh, it's on GitHub and you can download it from there and we'll give you a link to that later in the presentation. So here's some useful links. This first three that are here are for to help you make an appropriate selection of a, or to help you define a custom coordinate system. There's the link to Snyder's selection guidelines, which is professional paper 1395 from the USGS. To the right of that is the projection wizard link. And then uh, Professor Gosling's Python add-in, which is a toolbar for map projection selection. And then there's some of the document documentation so in ArcGIS Pro, you can find the list of supported map projections. That's also available in ArcMap as well. And then on GitHub or from uh, GeoNet, you can download the quick notes on map projections in ArcGIS. That's a poster which lists all the map projections and then their properties and extents and when you might want to use it. And then finally, there is the map projections learning path available at learn.arcgis.com. And another set of useful links, these are all presentations or story maps that talk about uh, Web Mercator, not Web Mercator, using something else for base maps or for online data, online maps. First, there's a blog post, Mercator, it's not hip to be square. Here are some equal area projected maps for ArcGIS Online and how to make them. Another one for ArcGIS Online on use your own base map. And then finally, from the Dev Summit in 2018, there was a presentation on client-side processing and web applications, which talked about how on the client side, you could now use, uh, you could reproject your data on the client side and not have to worry about what it was set to on the, the server side. That's the end of our presentation. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you learned some very good information. Thank you again.